Hello everyone and welcome to another Roblox game development tutorial. Now, last tutorial we made our GUI move, right? But the thing is, is it keeps moving now. It just keeps going. We're going to work on making an animation when we click something now. And that'll just make it grow out. But we need a for loop to do this, okay? So we're going to get started. Let's go into our storage UI, screen UI frame. And let's move it. Uh, and let's actually get rid of it. Actually, get rid of the screen view or the frame. And let's just put in a text button. Simple, just a simple text button. Um, I'm going to change the style to be Roblox button because um, laziness for the win, right? We all agree with that. All right. Uh, let's make it size 20% uh, of the screen horizontally and 1% of the screen vertically uh, to begin with. And we won't stylize it too much because style is not always efficient when you're just trying to get a script done. Alright, so script.parent.mouseButton one click, oops, connect function I capitalize everything right now what the heck and all right now what this script is going to do is it's just going to make the text button take up your entire screen in just a couple seconds possibly in less than a second uh, in fact it should be less than a second uh, when running without lag and the thing is though is it's not going to keep expanding it's not going to go from okay I got your entire screen now let me go more and more and more. It's just going to stop right there. How? Easy enough. But we're going to make a variable. Uh, actually, no. Let's not make a variable. Uh, so let's just make a for loop. For i equals 1. Now, we know right now that the x and the y size variables are different, right? That could be a bit of a problem, but it's not going to be. Why? Because we're that amazing of scripters. All right. So we're actually we actually are going to make a variable, just not the variable I was thinking of. Uh, we're going to name it width change or WC for width change, and this will be one minus. Let's make parameters. Remember guys, math is really important for scripting and programming. One minus script dot parent dot size dot x dot x, I believe it's offset. How does this work? Let's go into explorer and properties. In the script dot parent, go down to size, open that up and open that up. And actually it's not x offset back in the script. It's just x dot offset back in the properties. So we can just change that, and it's not even offset that I want. I want scale. But oh well, we'll change that in a second. But basically, guys, size has UDIM two values have their own value altogether. Then you can go smaller and get just the X or just the Y. And inside of each of those, you can get just the offset or just the scale. And that's what we're doing here. Go back to the script and change that to scale. And we'll divide this. We're going to want this to run 50 times. So let's actually, yeah, we'll make that variable I was talking about. Let's do, uh, let's name it uh, times through, sure. Um, and we'll just make it 50 right now. And then we'll change this 50 to times through. And then height change equals 1 minus script dot parent dot size dot y that scale divided by times through and let me explain what these equations are going to do so we're taking 50 okay 50 is what we're dividing everything by but inside of parentheses which will the answer to what's inside these parentheses will be divided by 50 what's inside of here is going to expand it uh, or this is how much room is left from our GUI that is currently not all the way covering the screen. So one, as you remember, is if you have one for the scale, it's covering the entire screen for either the X or the Y. 
So 1 minus its current scale value for either the X or the Y will get how much of the screen is left open from your GUI. And then we're dividing whatever that is by times through, and we're going to go times through the table. Now for loops don't have to be given an array. The number array way is just so that you can get through an entire array no matter how long it is. But you don't have to do that. You can also just apply just a regular number. And now, what tab? All right, now script dot parent dot size equals script dot parent dot size plus. Here's where we finally get the fun part. Udim two dot new. Wc zero. Hc zero. Now what we're doing is we're adding in however much it's supposed to change by each time of the width and the height every time all the way through to the end. And just to double check that we actually get everything done, let's go to the end here and script.parent.size equals udim2.new1010. One, zero, one, zero. Now, what the script is going to do is make it cover the entire screen when you click it. There's a small error here that I'm going to show you guys so that you don't make the mistake yourself. And if you do make the mistake, you can figure it out. Because if I just write it, you're not going to necessarily think about it. And I don't want that. I want you guys to actually be able to be self-sufficient scripters. Not because that means you won't be messaging me. I actually love helping you guys when you message me. But also just because... You guys, I'm not going to be able to fix every problem. Sometimes you'll have to do it. And sometimes it'll be quicker if you can do it yourself. So now let's click this button. What? It just covered the entire screen right away. What's wrong? What did you lie about? I didn't lie about anything. Here's what happened. For loops run as quickly as they can through everything you tell them to do. They don't wait for you to want them to go through again. Unless, of course, you tell them to. So we're going to add a wait, and that'll make it wait, and it'll just smoothly go through it, okay? I know we used wait in the while loops because that's the only way to keep the game from crashing, but it was also the only way that would keep the GUI from just appearing as big as it could be, okay? For loops, if they're not insanely high values between one and however many times you want them to iterate with iterate means go through it you don't need to have a wait for for loops unless you have a massively long iteration amount in which case you do now if we click button after of course this comment kind of falls and i put this tool away now if we press the button the x moved across the y didn't uh, which is actually not surprising too much. Actually, it is very surprising. It means that our HC did not get declared correctly. So let's do some debugging. Print w WC equals WC. And then HC equals and we'll add HC. Now, when we run this script again, we can find out how much is it supposed to increment by, because the Y never incremented, and that's a problem. But we can easily, easily, easily fix it if we just figure it out. So give it a couple seconds, and uh, it should be loaded, and we can find out what it is, all right? So let's click the button and watch the output. All You guys will know when I click the button. Okay, okay. So the HC does have a value. So why is the Y not incrementing? Let's figure that out, shall we? All right, so script.parent.size equals script.parent.size plus udim2.new uh, WC0, HC0. So why is the HC not making a difference? Whoa. That's deep, man. All right. So I can't exactly tell you why it's not working right away, 
But I can tell you, if we go back in the script, if we change... Oh, actually, I can tell you why it's not working. Look at this line, people. Okay? So we know the script that parent that size is fine because we didn't get an error barked at us. We also know it's fine here, and we know one equal sign means we're changing something. We know the plus sign is fine. We didn't get an error. We know udem 2new is fine. We didn't get an error. So if we mar get it narrowed down, we know it has to be in the parameters. Well, we know that the x is working fine, so now we're down to here. Well, we know that it's not supposed to move the pixels, so now we're down to just here. So let's compare these two. We know HC is printing fine. It has a real value. So why isn't HC actually doing anything here? Because capitalization matters. Look here. I have a capital C after a lowercase h. Over here, I have a lowercase c after a lowercase h. So we have to change the lowercase c to an uppercase c. And now we can press F6 again. And now it should work. Alright, so see you guys, you got to use the process of narrowing everything down when you're debugging. Now, while it is a little embarrassing that I got an error in my code, at least you guys are getting another lesson about debugging. Debugging is a very crucial and you'll spend about 80% of your time scripting just debugging. So now let's press this script. It's sliding across perfectly now. It ends. Everything's perfect. Great job, guys. Now, what happens if we click it again, though? Nothing. That's what we'll be working on next time. All right. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like or dislike button as you felt about this video. And um, I will catch you guys later.